Folks, it is Rack House Rules time. The Blake Street Brawlers are out and in full effect. Alongside the Almanac of Rocky Mountain Pro, Lucas Bradwell, I'm Stuart Campbell. Here to bring you this edition, Rack House Rules of Rocky Mountain Pro Charged. And it is great to be back, finally, back on my home, Charged. And, well, and it's no thanks to this guy, Titus Machiavelli, who I was gone for almost a year. And finally, I am back where I belong, and we start off with the down four-point cartel. I must say it will be a different feel for this edition of Charge, not being berated by the evil genius of professional wrestling. Good, bad, or indifferent, he certainly is a presence on commentary. He is out here. Give me your attention! Oh, that makes me sick. With the four-point cartel. As looming a figure as Rocky Mountain My Pro name has ever seen. Is Titus Machiavelli. I am the evil genius of professional wrestling. Yeah, we know. I said, give me your attention now. Well, certainly is the quite the commanding presence, is he not? Yeah, you can call him that. Looks like a hefty bag. I've got all night. Remember, he did hire you back. He let me know that first week. He is Come on, get it out of your system. I've he come out here it. tonight for one reason, and one reason only. What would that mean? We settle family business. Anaya, get out here now. Well, we've certainly seen the the chain of events on, that Anaya. have played out between uh, Anaya and his brother, Hoodie, have such accomplished competitors together in the four-point cartel. Sure. And, uh, Doesn't need like, to get that ass out here now! Well, obviously, uh, a man of little patience is Titus Machiavelli, but here is the aforementioned Anaya, former charged champion, but again, Hoodie and Anaya are brothers, and you have to wonder Anytime what exactly is going through Anaya's mind. For the past week, I have called and called and called you about what happened in our last episode. I've called you, and all I get this afternoon is a text message that says, Titus, it was an accident. You know what? You know what? Brother, what you might not know is that it's not easy to have a little brother, right? And it's especially not easy having a little brother in this business, okay? Because all I hear over and over and over again is, yeah, you're younger than me, you're tougher than me, hell, you're better looking than me. That's fine, that's fine. But you know what? Hey, hey, you know what you're not? You're not smarter than me. I've been the brains of this operation since we were in diapers, and that's why we're successful. I give a little, you give a little. We're the left coast gorillas, goddammit! We are the most dominant tag team in the history of pro wrestling in this state, and that is a fact. Can't deny that. Tough to dispute. But the problem is, bro, like I said, you're not, you're not as smart as me. I have more experience than you. I've been doing this longer than you have, and I understand that there are sharks in the water. There are constantly sharks swimming in the water around us. People like Vince Russo. People like Vince Russo. Look at this. Look at this. This is Vince Russo's influence right here. Listen. Brother, we're nose to nose right now because of Vince Russo. Because you have forgotten your place. And that's fine. Listen, I'm the leader here. And that's the way this is always gonna be. As long as I am here, as long as I'm in your life, I am going to be leading you along the way. The reason why, don't you sit there and look at me and act like I haven't provided everything for you. Remember, shut your mouth. 
mouth. That's what they want. Yeah, that's what they want. Because these people don't care about our relationship. They don't care about family. All they care about is themselves. Just like Vince Russo, these people don't care about you. They don't care about us. Brother, hey, hey, look at me. Remember Philadelphia? Remember standing at the bottom of those stairs, those stairs that you wanted to see since you were a kid? Remember standing at the bottom of those rocky stairs and looking up and thinking to ourselves, we can't believe we made it here. We are Ring of Honor superstars. And that's because of me. That's because of my influence. Brother, you know what? You know what, fine. I'll give you people, I'll give you bloodthirsty troglodytes exactly what you want, all right? Hey, this hasn't been the first time we've been in a fight and it won't be the last time. So brother, if you wanna hit me, just go ahead and hit me. I'd like to see it. But this is, this is, this isn't something we need to be cheering. Brothers hitting each other against one another, that's, I mean, I'm a younger brother myself. I know exactly the sort of struggle that Anaya is going through right now. Granted, I don't have a brother in the business. I'm sure it creates a strain unlike anything that we have felt, Lucas Bradwell, but this is this is hard to watch to, a, to I guess, an extent. I guess you're a lot smarter than what I gave you credit for, bro. But you know what? Now that you got me all riled up. Oh my goodness! That was uncalled for! That's, oh, and here we go! Anaya and Hoodie! This has been building up for weeks, Lucas Bradwell! Uh, probably for years, you gotta think about it. Anaya was basically raised by Hoodlum. He's Trey Island! Oh. Trying to trying to separate oh, these two. Pounding, to oh! He's, he's pounding away him. at Anaya! He's still going! Those two are quite well separated at this point. And what the hell? They're down there beating the hell out of Anaya, who's, who's only trying to do the right thing. Hoodie. Anaya, in case you didn't know, that's how it gets done. By any means necessary. Oh, stop it. Trey Island separated those two, continued to beat up on Anaya, and then Hoodie picked up the scraps. If that's by any means necessary, then I'm sorry. There is absolutely no honor in such a victory. Does that surprise you? Titus Machiavelli will do absolutely anything. This is nothing new. Oh, he's coming towards us. Oh, sorry to interrupt you. Now he's got the mic. Such tactics hey. are indicative of the Four hey, Point Trey. Cartel's presence. Hey, Island. That little vision, get over here. Whoa. Hey, you want to get in between my brother and I's fight? Huh? Yeah. How about this? Instead of that, how about me and you wrestle? Yeah. Huh? You want that? Anaya versus the, the paid hitman. I, I can fight Island. him whenever I want. I want you tonight. CEO's out here. He made it official there, Stuart. Titus Machiavelli says it's official. Anaya versus the muscle of the four-point cartel, Trey Island, here tonight. Folks, we will take you to words from the C from the owner of Rocky Mountain Pro, Matt Yaden. Yeah, I guess. What can I help you with? Oh, hey, Hannah. How's it going? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good, man. Did you see what I found? I see. What is this? It's a uh, looks like a bunch of bunch of cage, a lot of cage. You know, thought it was appropriate. So last week you beat Anaya by disqualification. I did. Because of football. You know how many wins I've had lately? You've had a lot. I lost like 40 pounds. And all of a sudden, started winning again. Crazy. Like, I'm still pretty good at this. You know. So, right. um, yeah. Yeah, I was there. And Hoodlum, like, 
I mean, it kind of it was a disqualification win, but a win's a win, nonetheless, right? Exactly. And um, those two aren't getting along very well lately. I find it I find it funny. Like he was pretty mad at him for that. Oh, am I supposed to, I'm supposed to talk about this? He was pretty mad about that. So, so yeah, things are good. I think right now. And now in two weeks at Milestone, you have a steel cage match against. Hulam. I do, and I found a cage. Like, did I tell you that already? Is this a cage? This that I, I don't know. It's just outside of the Pro Wrestling Academy. Um, that um, uh, that guy uh, that has been oh, running for the last few months. Yeah, and there's all these flies around here. I mean, I guess Hoodlum does run the school now, so it smells like. Sh oh wait, I can't say that. Can I still peachy? <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's like he bought this cage or something. I'm assuming this is the one he's gonna use. He doesn't know I'm here, and it's weird though, cause look, look, like it's not very tall. It's, oh, I don't know if it goes. I mean, Maybe it goes the other way. Does it? Cause just, just try to climb this, thing, you know, my. I don't know. I would assume it'd be taller because I think it's, I don't know. Anyway, and then all this stuff here, like, look at this. Like, is this supposed to, like, wrap around or is, I don't know. I don't know how cages work. I mean, I know they work, but I don't know how they're built for rings and stuff. Anyway. Yeah, but, that's uh, probably more your forte than mine. I, yeah, I've never been in one. Um, does that answer your question, though? Because I kind of, I have to get to the rack house, but I kind of want to look at this cage a little bit more. Flies. Well, I will let you finish scouting your cage. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And um, if you have any more questions, uh, you know how to get to the rec house, right? Have you been I there before? Yes. Okay, good. Um, I'll be there. And um, yeah, yeah. What's that say? Steel. Oh, well. All right. We'll see you later. almost taste it. You can smell it in the air. The winds of change are upon us here at the <laughs> here at the Hoodlum Pro Wrestling Academy. You see, ever since I've taken over the school, we are in a new era. Ever since I've taken over Colorado Pro Wrestling, we are in a new age. So all you young hopeful wrestlers, all you young upcoming athletes, you want to come down to the school? You want to come down to the quarry, down to Hoodlum Pro Wrestling Academy, and try to make a name for yourself? Well, I have good news. For a limited time, we are offering my services for the low, low price of literally everything you got. Bring your entire paycheck. Bring your wife. Bring your kids. I want everything in your house. You cannot pay me enough for my services as a pro wrestling trainer. Go online. Look at the phone number, 8675309, baby. Go to MercuryProWrestling.academy right now and join the revolution. When I met Ashburn the first time, he, there was always something off about him. Fast forward, it just shows me like, as soon as he walked out on me, when Titus Machiavelli put us in attack team, I realized like, he was always envious of me, being the champ. And just like, stealing my belt just shows me, he's jealous, envious, insecure, he wants to be the champ. But you gotta do it the right way, Stephen Ashburn. Because to get what you want, you have to deserve what you want. Yeah, you beat me. You chased me down, you beat me up. I haven't beat you yet. You hurt me, you injured me. But guess what happens when you back an animal into a corner? It gets dangerous. There's nothing much I can say, but one thing I can promise you. We both, me and you, after Milestone 7, I promise you, we won't be the same. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is set for one fall. First, making his way to the ring. Haley from Raleigh, North Carolina. Please welcome the show, Dwayne Douglas. The show, Dwayne Douglas approaches the ring and he has been confirmed to be an entrant into the second annual Colorado Cup Battle Royal at Milestone should be a contest, but we heard earlier, in fact, just now, from sugar-free Mario Banjo, the Rocky Mountain Pro Champion. Those words resonating strongly, 
reflecting how he feels. A caged animal back and into a corner gets Making his way beat. to the ring, hailing from Cleveland, Ohio. He is your Rocky Mountain Pro Charge Champion, Steven Ashburn! And this is the man who has backed him into said corner. The man holding his Rocky Mountain Pro Charge Championship and Mario Vanger's Rocky Mountain Pro Championship. Steven Ashburn has driven Mario Vanger up the wall for a course of months now, and Lucas Bradwell, I can't see Mario Vanger tolerating it for very much longer. Absolutely not. You can see the demeanor of Mario Vanger has completely changed. No more crazy promos where he's, you know, talking to horses and all this wild stuff. Oh! Oh, the show, Dwayne Douglas. And nothing for show about this. He wants to get the upper hand on the charge champion right away. Beautiful arm drag. He has firmly established himself at the offset of this match, perhaps providing Vanger a blueprint on how to handle Ashburn at Milestone. What a drop kick. This is exactly what the show, Dwayne Douglas, needed to do. Somebody has accomplished as Steven Ashburn. Oh! Caught Ashburn off balance into the scoop slam. Ashburn did not think to uh, land properly on that. There's no real good way to land on a scoop slam, I will say. But here he goes. Oh my goodness! Rolling, diving headbutt. Using that point of pressure and, well, that's using your head for one, but Dwayne Douglas, we've seen him take to the air, but we've certainly seen since uh, Oh, oh! look at that, Ashburn. Oh, Ashburn scouted that perfectly. I was about to say, the tutelage of Mr. McAllister for Dwayne Douglas has certainly seemed to pay dividends, at least in terms of the ground and pound game. We've always seen the show Dwayne Douglas fly, but he seems to have matured in more ways than one. Well, absolutely, you see intensity. Jeff McAllister's nickname is Mr. Intensity. It's rubbed off on the show Dwayne Douglas, obviously. As you see, Ashburn, no stranger to having mentors. Oh, what a cocky cover. Only a two count, says the official Martin Aloysius. We've seen, a, we've seen Stephen Ashburn be mentored by your ever so lovely friend, Titus Machiavelli. In the past, he's since... Uh, I guess the, since then the relationship has been strained, but Ashburn, since then, and, and uh, Mr. Machiavelli has mentioned this on commentary before, he has liked the change in attitude that he's seen from Stephen Ashburn. Well, of course he will. He likes ultra violence. He likes a guy who's on the hands, which is exactly what Stephen Ashburn is. Stephen Ashburn's whole demeanor has changed. Cover here, only, oh, only a two count. Perhaps could have used the hook of the leg there. No more being a fake French guy. No more teaming up with Tyler Stinson. No more. He's, he wants to become the ultimate Rocky Mountain Pro competitor, and he would become that by becoming a dual champion come Milestone 7. At Milestone 7, we will see the crowning of the first double champion in the history of Rocky Mountain Pro. The question is, will it be this gentleman, Stephen Ashburn, or sugar-free Mario Vanger. Douglas looking to get the driver's seat back. He does not succeed in a snap suplex, sends him back down, and Stephen Ashburn, this change in demeanor that we've seen over the past few months, ever since he earned that Rocky Mountain Pro Charge Championship in a somewhat dubious fashion, and here come the forearms. Flying from all sides as they do, and Cleveland's native-born son, with the knee, and Ashburn. This is classic Ashburn. This is his offense. This is what he has done for several years now, ever since coming here. And this is about the point where he starts softening up his opponent. What? Where's that oh, vice grip? There it is, the system lock, firmly in the ring. In the center, does Dwayne Douglas have the wherewithal to reach the ropes? He's fighting, give him credit, but Ashburn. Oh, wait a second. I'm gonna make it. There's a little bit of give there. Ashburn may not have his weight fully planted. He does not, and Dwayne Douglas 
has used one of his rope breaks. And there you see the Air Force officer showing his grit, showing his toughness there. This is an active duty Air Force officer. I don't know if people you know, can relate to this, but he wrestled part time, is in the military. Just an unbelievable story is the show. The right hands, Dwayne Douglas looking to revive his chances in this match. A set of clotheslines to follow and the drop kick. The oh so familiar drop kick of the show sends Ashburn into the corner. He follows it up, going for that monkey flip we've seen so many times in the past. And kick to the gut. Dwayne Douglas is in a precarious position. Caught in the small of his back on the top rope, on the top turnbuckle. Oh my goodness, the reign of Ash. Cover here. A more compact reign of Ash than we're used to seeing. Gets the job done for Steven Ashburn. He was taken to the by the show The sense of conniving that we have seen from Ashburn over the months has been nothing short of brutal. And my goodness, is there really anything more to prove here? Come on. This is a message. Oh, wait a second. It's being run out of the ring. Mario Vanger is out here wielding a wrench. And it's like he said before, Lucas, a caged animal is at its most dangerous when it is backed into a corner. And Mario Vanger has had quite enough of Steven Ashburn. And it will come to a head at Milestone 7. This is a very different side to Mario Vanger, more serious than ever. He knows that his championship has never been in more jeopardy than it will be just two weeks away. He will not, he will look to not only take back the physical Rocky Mountain Pro Championship belt, but disgrace Ashburn by taking his charge championship as well. Folks, we will be back with more action here on Rocky Mountain Pro Charge with Humphrey Jacobs explaining his deceitful actions against Curtis Cole. We're still a tag team though. We're good? Yeah, whatever. I guess we're still a tag team. All right, let's, uh, let's cheers. Let's go. There we go. The Mile High Express. You disgust me. Yeah, yeah brother! Woo And here he is, Humphrey Jacobs the first. Well, he didn't break Wahoo's leg. He certainly claims to have broken Curtis Cole's neck with that pile driver that we saw last week echoing throughout the halls of the quarry in Golden, Colorado. And here at the Rackhouse Brewery in the Rhino District of Denver, Colorado, he will explain his actions. Quite frankly, I can't believe he did what he did either. Cut the music. I can believe it. What I need now is for all you fat, ugly, stupid, three knuckle deep Denver Dilly Bars to shut your mouths, open your ears, and listen to what the king of old style has to say. Now, all week long I've been getting questions left and right. They've been asking me, hey Humphrey, hey King, why'd you take your tag team partner Curtis Cole 
Why'd you take his stupid looking head, turn it upside down, and drive it straight into the mat? <laughs> yeah. Well, really, the answer is pretty simple. Curtis Cole represents everything I hate about today's professional wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Curtis Cole's flashy. He thinks he's funny. After matches, he asked me to come play video games. Do you think Harley Race? Do you think Dick Murdoch? Do you think Ric Flair? Do you think Arn and Tully ever played video games? Well, they only no. have the 2600. But you know what? That's a perfect representation of all you wrestling fans. Because wrestling fans today are just a bunch of fat dudes sitting in their mom's basement at a computer drinking Mountain Dew Code Red. Uh, now, this tag team means nothing to me. I am the modern day Magnum TA. Curtis Cole is nothing but a Neo Maxi Zoom Dweeby. Oh, and he has had quite enough of this as Curtis Cole. And frankly, I am shocked that he has even found a way to get out of his uh, out of his hospice care. Well, he's not dying, Stuart Campbell. Well, I mean, look at him. His neck is in uh, his neck is in rough shape. He had a hard time even walking uh, into the building here today, and I have no idea. What is possessing him to come out to the ring right now? This could get very dangerous very quickly. I can tell you what's possessing I can tell you what's possessing him. He, he's got the heart of a champion. Ouch! Why are you such a jerk? Ow. Hold on. Hold on. Ow, goodness gracious. Ow. Don't do this to yourself, Curtis. Look, man, we were best friends, dude. Were they? We don't have to do this. We don't. I, he's saying we don't have to do this. Curtis Cole trying to talk some sense. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Slapping the taste out of Curtis Cole's mouth. Is H.J. Oh, Moore. the expression has changed very quickly. Curtis Cole with the leg lariat. It's on. Cole and Jacobs are going at it. The locker room spilling out to separate these two. Was, was he playing possum? Was he playing possum? I, it looks like that may in fact be the case, but these two warring factions almost certainly going at it. At Milestone, nothing has been confirmed as of yet. We've been hearing the rumors spinning on social media. As you saw on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Cole and Jacobs are at each other's throats, quite literally. You know things are serious when Mercury Matt Yaden's out here and he's got a match of his own to worry about. This, this situation could only get uglier from here. Curtis Cole and Humphrey Jacobs, once partners, now mortal enemies. Folks, we will be right back here with more Rocky Mountain Pro Charged. Wrestling, a love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand the wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand.
Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is set for one fall. First, making his way to the ring, hailing from the nearest happy hour, please welcome to me, Island. We saw this match alluded to at the beginning as Trey Island, the, the muscle, the security, the, uh, let's say securing force in the Four Point Cartel, hired on by Titus Machiavelli during this season of Charge, decided to interfere between the dealings of Anaya and Hoodie as they were, uh, let's say, hashing it out in the middle of the ring here. I'll give you my thoughts on Trey of Tremaine Island here in just a minute. And his opponent, making his way to the ring, hailing from Los Angeles, California. Please welcome Anaya! Let's be perfectly clear about what Tremaine Island is. He's a hired thug. That's all he is. He's a hired thug to do Titus Machiavelli's dirty work. And obviously, this week it was to to do damage to Anaya. They knew something was gonna go wrong during that little intervention or whatever the hell you wanna call it. As you saw in the background, as Anaya was walking to the ring, the CEO of Rocky Mountain Pro, Titus Machiavelli, the kingpin of the Four Point Cartel. And he is out here advising Trey Island against Anaya, one can only speculate as to what he is saying, but I can only imagine his advice was to win this match and perhaps teach Anaya a lesson about what it means to cross the four point cartel. Referee Joel Gessner sounds for the bell, we are underway, and what could, what could be going through the mind of Anaya? Oh my goodness, well, well Anaya's hand going through the face of Trey Island, and a hip toss followed up by that knee. Anaya is a warrior. Anaya, all he cares about is fighting. He just he just wants to compete in the ring. And he's always had that his brother in his way. Maybe now, maybe them having this little fallout is a good thing for Anaya. Ooh! They were certainly accomplished competitors in the tag team division. Were the left coast gorillas. Made it all the way to the squared circle, the hollowed squared circle of Ring of Honor. Oh my goodness! But now they are apart. Anaya looking to make a name for himself. And Hoodie, well, we're just going to have to see where their relationship goes. Cover here. Only a two count, says official Joel Gessner. Well, I wish nothing but ill will towards them. I, I, they've been nothing but bullies in here in Rocky Mountain Pro for years. And Th them being the Four Point Cartel, correct? That would be the Four Point Cartel. Oh my goodness! And Trey Island, holy smokes, I mean, hired gun or not, this man has some absolutely explosive power. But Anaya caught him there. And let's not forget Anaya, an accomplished competitor in his own right, a former Rocky Mountain Pro Charge Champion. Two times, two times. Two times. So nice had to do it twice. The drop kick to the gut works. And Anaya firmly, say it with me folks, in the driver's seat here at the Rack House Brewery in the Rhino section of Denver, Colorado. This is Rack House Rules alongside Lucas Bradwell. I am Stuart Campbell. And, oh wait, takes him up. We could have seen the uh, the annihilation. Haven't seen that in a while, but what a beautiful drop toe hold into the corner. Wow, what impact. Double knees to the back of the head. That knocks out a lesser man. And Anaya, bad intentions going for that. That reverse senton into the corner was not successful that time. And Trey Island off the top rope. We just saw Island Thunderfly, Lucas. Well, I'll give it up to Tremaine, Tremaine Island. He is, for being just a, a relative newcomer here at Rocky Mountain Pro, he has really made a name for himself, especially with Titus Machiavelli. He, obviously, Titus saw something he liked in this guy, and now he's, well, he's the hired gun. You have to think that at least watching and being under the tutelage of people like Hoodlum, 
and Titus Machiavelli have done something for the in-ring progress of Trey Island. Oh, and a hard kick to the back. But don't get me wrong, you have to be born with the mean streak that Trey Island has. Cover here. Only a two count, says Joel Gessner. Anaya clearly kicking out. And it's going to be those things that perhaps Trey Island can pick up as he goes along, learning to hook the leg before going for that cover. Learning to dig in that, and a beautiful, uh, beautifully applied hold here by Trey. But again, that will have to come with experience, and he will need just a little more than skill to come out on top and with Anaya. Tremaine Island for just being a newcomer also, what a great spot he's in. Because also at Milestone 7, it's been announced that he will also be a part of the second annual Colorado Cup Battle Royal. It, it, I guess it pays to be cushy with the boss. Cover here, hooks the near side. Only a two count. Anaya certainly focused on Milestone as well, just announced. He versus Rolls Royce Isaacs. Now this is something I find quite interesting because we don't really know what's going on in Anaya's head. Rolls Royce Isaacs, oh my goodness, what a leg drop by Trey Island. Cover here was not successful in getting the fall. Both of these gentlemen are products of the Mercury Pro Wrestling Academy. And we have seen it. We saw the ad early, earlier in the show, in fact. It is still the Hoodlum Pro Wrestling Academy. You will the, not get me to say that ever. The school, well, Titus has, but he hired me. What can I say? The man pays my checks. But among other things on the line at Milestone 7 is the school, the ownership, and one might say the very soul of Rocky Mountain Pro. As Anaya, oh, excuse me, Hoodlum, takes on Mercury Matt Yaden inside of a steel cage. Cover here. Only a two count. Somehow, Anaya, well, you can see it on his face. He is fighting, folks. Well, you just talked about the most important match in Rocky Mountain Pro history with everything on the line. Everything on the line for Mercury Matt Yaden. Everything on the line for Titus Machiavelli. And, well, hell, a lot on the line for even Wait you and I. Wait a second here. Anaya, Titus Machiavelli, face to face, simply saying to get back into the ring, and Trent, oh, and a kick to the gut. And a drop kick, what elevation by Trey Island. And you have to think that Titus Machiavelli, not the one, one to be easily impressed, certainly pleased with what he has seen from Trey Island. And I gotta ask you this. Have you thought about the possibility of Titus Machiavelli having sole ownership here in Rocky Mountain Pro? Can you imagine? Oh my goodness! Well, he, uh, I can imagine him ab abusing the power like he did, uh, like he just bent the rules there. Cover here, only a, oh, only a two count. You mean like he's done for the past three years? The, the whole time he's been here, he's abused his power. Yeah, something along those lines, Lucas Bradwell. I can only imagine what sort of devious plans that brain has cooked up. I'll probably be scrubbing floors or something here at Rocky Mountain Pro. I might be joining you. The hard right hand from Anaya coming down over the skull of Trey Island. Beautiful running grapple has Trey. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> the hard back elbow. The strikes coming hard and fast from Anaya. The younger half of the, of the left coast gorillas. He takes up Trey Island, but oh. Beautifully played to get out of the hold and the Enziguri to follow. Got it caught Anaya right in the back of the head. Both men are down. What a matchup we've seen here, but I'm just thinking about that matchup you mentioned at Milestone 7, a dream matchup. Rolls Royce Isaac versus Anaya. That's like two of the best in the whole entire region going at it. Fans, you will be in for a treat as Anaya takes on the prodigal son of Rocky Mountain Pro, Rolls Royce Isaacs. The first major event since his return from Dramatic Dream Team in Japan and he will be facing off 
against the younger half of the left coast gorilla Zanaya. Trey Island with the strikes. That's not taking anything away. Wow. Oh my goodness! The roaring elbow! I was, I was gonna say, I, let's not take anything away from this match. It's incredible right now. God's revolver catching Trey Island square in the face. And you have to think, oh my goodness, the drive-by. Cover here. One, two, Trey Island. Give him credit. Somehow finds a way to kick out after two monstrous shots to the head. I will tell you, Tremaine Island is surprising the hell out of me. I expected a good fight. I didn't expect this good of a fight. He has taken a night of the limit. Up into the fireman's carry. This is a message for everyone in the four-point cartel. Perhaps no way. Cover here. Two. Only a two count. Anaya rolls out. Trey Island with the boot to the, with the boot to the gut. Excuse me. Followed up by the suplex. Rolls into the cover. One, two. Oh, oh my goodness! Anaya with his shoulder up at two and nine tenths. We just saw. We almost saw a huge upset there, Stuart Campbell. Trey Island a hair's breadth away from victory here at the Rackhouse Brewery. This crowd is going wild. Well, they're called the Rowdies for a reason. Absolutely. We are so grateful for their support as they come out to watch the Blake Street Brawlers. And wow! You see that low blow, Stuart Campbell. Well, we're used to saying Rackhouse rules, but you think even by those standards, the rules might have been bent there with the low blow by Trey Island fully distracting the referee. Joel Gessner had no chance of seeing that. The rules weren't the only thing oh, that was bent with that kick. Wait a second. Wait a second. Trey Island in the back. There's Danger Dean. Danger Dean has just run out in front of us. And he has taken the garbage can lid to the back of Trey Island. And he has just crossed the evil genius of professional wrestling. Anaya with the cover. Two, three. Anaya wins. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your Danger Dean, a wild card if Rocky Mountain Pro has ever known one, has just crossed the evil genius, the CEO of Rocky Mountain Pro. And you have to wonder, is it all coming off the rails for the four-point cartel? It sure looks like it, and I couldn't be happier. This could be the time where we get our company back, Stuart Campbell. Everything is looking like it's falling into place. The will of Rocky Mountain Pro is strong. But is the Four Point Cartel's influence even stronger? We will have to see. Hope that beer is strong enough for you, Anaya. Because this is Rackhouse Rules. That's just how we roll at the Rackhouse Brewery. What a match that was. And up next, our main event is going to be an eight man tag, or well, actually, an eight man elimination match. It's going to be unbelievable. And it's going to be next here on Rocky Mountain Pro Charged. Please welcome Tyler Stinson. The Evolution Tyler Stinson. And that will bring us into main event action here at the Rack House. And well, there are not many more fearsome presences in Rocky Mountain Pro than Tyler Stinson and his uh, his lethal striking ability. I've always said he is the most dangerous man in Rocky Mountain Pro because From of that. From Las Vegas, Colorado, please welcome Rolls Royce Isaacs! Well, you talk about dangerous, this man is at least as dangerous as he is fashionable. I'd wear that coat. That is Rolls Royce Isaacs, the prodigal son of Rocky Mountain Pro, and he will be participating in main event eight-man tag team action. I think he got that from a thrift shop, or was that a one of those Fifth Avenue deals? Couldn't quite tell you. Whatever tags he may be popping, he sure is rocking that coat. 
But folks, the eight man tag action that we have for you here. It is Manny Lemons, Dallas Murdoch, the Evolution Tyler Stinson, and Rolls Royce Isaacs going up against, as you see on the right hand corner of your screen, too cool. The Norse Nightmare Hunter Gray and Vince Russo's personal filter. That is, this is a monster of a matchup. Yeah, monster of a matchup and a monster of a man and filter. And right now we start off Dallas Murdoch and Zero Cool. And speaking of which, these two will also be, it has been confirmed, these, these four will be the opening contest of Milestone 7. Too cool versus Dallas Murdoch and Manny Lemons. And you have to wonder, Murdoch and Lemons, quite the odd pairing, but uh, I suppose it'll work. They've known each other for a long time. They've wrestled out of Utah at UCW Zero. They know each other very well. I think they'll be just fine. But, you know, Zero cool and not cool at all. Ooh. Dustin Urich, they are former Rocky Mountain Pro Tag Team Champions. Cover here. Perhaps eliminating Zero Cool. Nope, we need two count. Rolls-Royce Isaacs, as we have mentioned before, his appearances in Dramatic Dream Team taking Japan by storm. He has turned a lot of heads over in the land of the rising sun. He will in fact be returning in a few months. And he and Manny Lemons working like quite the team there. And you have to wonder, Murdoch and Lemons, certainly they've known each other for a long time. But they're two rather agreeable dudes. Perhaps they just work well with everyone. Manny Lemons, Over here. He's, he's an interesting character to say the least. His fascination with Lemons, I don't understand, but there's no doubt about it. He has really, over the past year, he's made a name for himself Ooh. all over the Western United States. Even in championship wrestling from Hollywood, he's really came to his own. Yeah, so loves Lemons so much, he decided to uh, have them be eponymous to his name. Tagged in was Rolls Royce Isaacs. Well executed. One, two. Oh, there you go. There is the elimination of Zero Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, Zero Cool has it. been eliminated. All too familiar with that is the fan base at Rocky Mountain Pro, and he will certainly be looking to hit that on Anaya and maybe turn some heads nationally upon his return to the United States main stages at Milestone 7. What a match that's going to be. And speaking of other matches, you got two of the participants in that triple threat Oh match. my goodness, we've seen it get ugly between these two before. The Norse Nightmare Hunter Gray and the Evolution Tyler Stinson. Yeah, for somehow, we have missed exactly what has made these two get so ugly with each other. But we will see these two alongside Filter in the contract in the crow's nest match at milestone seven the winner of that will be getting Ladies a gentlemen. championship opportunity Hunter Stinson and Hunter Gray have both been eliminated they just eliminated themselves they, they didn't think back in the five count you're absolutely I mean there's only so much that the official Martin Aloysius can do he counted them out well, most people that aren't familiar with Rocky Mountain Pro know that there's only a five count here instead of a ten count just one of the many rule differences here. Get a limited number of rule breaks. Those of you familiar with the pure title at Ring of Honor back in the day might be familiar with such a concept. Also, no going over the top rope. And, uh, well, certainly none of this that we're seeing from Gray and Stinson. Well, they just the match anyway. They're going to the bar. I doubt they're getting a drink together. Murdoch and Yurik beautifully executed. What a sidewalk slam, the three to two advantage, and Murdoch misses with the moonsault. They had the three to two man advantage, perhaps there was room to gamble, but it seems like Murdoch might have crapped out. That's a uh, great play on words, but oh! Now Murdoch, he's got Yurik down with that fireman's carry into a Samoan drop. Well recovered by Dallas Murdoch. Tags in his partner at Milestone, Manny Lemons. And Lemons bringing up Yurik. 
We will see these two face off in the opening match of Milestone 7. We hope that you will join us. It will be live in two weeks here on Fight TV. And it will be the biggest event that we've ever had. There's never been so much emotion into a show. There's never been so Ooh. much on the line. Absolutely all of it culminating between Hoodie Hoodlum, the one half of the Left Coast Gorillas and representative of the Four Point Cartel against Mercury Matt Yaden, who we saw earlier cover here. Only a two count, says referee Martin Aloysius. Against Matt Yaden, who we saw, it seemed like he was coming unglued. Well, yeah, he's unhinged. He's lost his mind and he could be losing his company come at Milestone 7. I sure hell hope not, but things don't look good for our owner. The words of Vince Russo, and we have not seen Vince Russo all season, although his influence has been surely felt by way of filter. However, we have heard him say in the past, especially on the very first episode of Rocky Mountain Pro Charge, he warned Matt Yaden not to play wrestler anymore. Perhaps, and he will have to play wrestler at least one more time to get his company back. Only a two count, says Martin Aloysius. Yurik has not put away Manny Lemons quite yet. Well, you talk about that. You talk about Mercury Yaden you know, not playing wrestler. You can't, take, you can't take away what a man is. He is what he is. He was born to be a wrestler. And you're not going to be able to take that away from him. But it, you could take away his company. Matt Yaden is at risk to lose everything at Milestone. His company, his school, and perhaps his sanity. Lemons and Yurik. Their matchup, considerably lesser stakes but you have to think that they want to go into Milestone with quite a deal of momentum. Absolutely, I mean. Wait, he, he's got a lemon. Wait, did Zero Cool just toss him a lemon? He just tossed him. Oh my goodness, he just threw it. The rhyme's in his face. Oh no, oh, he set him up! He set him up! That was not cool that at was, all! That was the dud, the Dustin York driver. That was the Many dud, gentlemen. certainly Many wasn't Lemons a dud. Many Lemons has been eliminated, and Murdoch will look to, well, he'll be looking to take out the trash. Zero Cool looks mighty proud of himself, but oh my goodness, over the top rope goes Yurik. Let me just mention, Zero Cool should be out of here. He was eliminated already. Murdoch is eliminated as well. He took he took Yurik over the top rope. Catching all these rules very fast. Well, I mean, that one was pretty obvious. It happened right in front of us. Pretty sure Yurik's boot almost hit us in the face. And Lemons, wait a second, Isaacs rolling into the three count. And my Where's goodness, that? that was beautifully it's executed. Dustin but, oh my goodness. Here is the striking six foot six juggernaut that Vince Russo personally hired to maintain his influence over this entire season of Rocky Mountain Pro Charge. This is Filter, and he's the freshest man in this contest. This is the first time we've seen him in the ring, and now he's, well, I mean, look at how imposing he is. He's six foot six, 300, almost 350 pounds. The largest athlete that we've ever had here in Rocky Mountain Pro. Rolls-Royce Isaacs might have a mountain to climb in the name of Filter if he wants to get the win for this team in this eight-man elimination contest here at the main event at the Rackhouse Brewery in the Rhino section of Denver, Colorado. Folks, this happens every fourth Friday of the month if you want to come out. And for more information, don't forget, you can like us on Facebook and follow us at Twitter and Instagram at the. Rocky MTN Pro. And you know the scariest thing about Filter is that he's only 21 years old. He, he still could grow for crying out loud. Both in stature and influence, this man is not done growing. But Rolls Royce Isaacs, perhaps looking to put the young man in his place. We've seen his exploits in Japan. We've seen what he has been able to accomplish since he came back 
to the Rocky Mountain Pro Squared Circle, and he is not done. He is standing up to the monster that is Filter. He's not punching Filter. He didn't uh -oh. even move him. We've seen this all too often. Oh, smart going for the knees. There's a lot of elevation on that man, Filter. Wait a second. He recovers quickly. But that fresh kick to the knees, does he? Perhaps he didn't have what it took to, uh, to lift with the knees right away for the F-bomb. Waist lock here by Isaacs, but that's well taken care of by Filter. We've never seen Rolls Royce Isaacs not be able to use his strength against anybody, but this time it's not doing him any good. That is a lot of leverage that one may need to take Filter off of that vertical base. Well, that's the drop kick to the redwood tree. The drop kick to the knees seemed to work temporarily, but the recovery of Filter was astounding. Oh my goodness. Lifting Rolls Royce Isaacs like he is nothing. That is a man in excess of 250 pounds, just barely granted. That's all muscle. But that is no tiny man that Filter just uh, lifted up, but the strikes raining heavy on both of these gentlemen. And it looks like they're not out of the storm quite yet. And you can see by the style of Rolls Royce Isaacs that he's using that how much of an influence his time in Japan has had. Look at that strong style that he's using. And just huge strikes. Oh. The forearms raining heavy upon the head of Filter. Filter responds in kind. Oh, he was going for a lariat there. This a hard strike to the face. Oh my goodness. I think he landed on his head. A backdrop driver on the small of the spine. Plants filter on the C-spine, somehow only gets a two count. Look at the surprise on Royce Isaacs. What does he have to do to put away the monster filter? Oh my goodness. Did you see the look on Filter's face? The F-bomb! That's it. Cover! Two! And Let Filter has no just way. shown the world exactly... Filter. He has shown the world exactly what Vince Russo sees in him. He is a six foot six imposing monster. And he looks to rain havoc upon the landscape of Rocky Mountain Pro for many years to come. And he looks to be rolling into Milestone 7 in that, what do you call it, Crow's Nest match. He is gonna, he could be the next number one contender. And, well, just look at him. The Norse Nightmare Hunter Gray and Tyler Stinson will have to climb the mountain that is Filter. Folks, for Lucas Bradwell, I am Stuart Campbell. We will see you next time here on Rocky Mountain Pro Charge.